All right, so in this video, we're actually going to get going here using Webpack with our CSS, and we're going to set up the basics that we need to start developing uh, with Webpack and CSS, right? So um, quick disclaimer, I'm going to try a new style of recording videos. I'm not going to waste time and type things out for you. I'm just going to show you the finished code, go through it line by line and explain it. Um, and hopefully that, that works a little bit better. Um, if you guys don't like that and you prefer me to type and talk as I go along, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I think this will save some time. So uh, first thing we wanna do is install our dependencies. So uh, what we're gonna set up here is we need to install the CSS-loader, okay? And also install the style loader. Um, these loaders will help us to use CSS in the Webpack. Um, so remember, Webpack is just basically a tool built off of Node. Node is for JavaScript, right? Um, so what Webpack is basically doing is it's uh, reading in these files and it will assume that you're using JavaScript unless otherwise told, right? So that's what loaders do. Loaders are basically transformations that happen to files that you load in or require in. Um, as a node module, right? So what we need to do is since CSS is obviously not JavaScript, it, Webpack needs um, loaders to handle that file type in a specific way that isn't JavaScript, right? And what's really great about this is that as we go along, you'll see that it's not only capable of reading in CSS, it can really read in any file as long as you have an appropriate loader for it, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is in our Webpack config, we now need to add those loaders we just installed. So you can pretty much just copy whatever you may or may not have had for JavaScript, but let's just go through it. So the test value again will determine if the file that is being required should use a certain loader, right? So for the test, we're gonna write a regex that will say the file name must end, hence the dollar sign here, in a .css, right? So that way it knows any files that are of uh, extension.css will be run through this loader instead, okay? So uh, to set up our loader chain here, what we wanna do is we wanna do a style loader, bang, a CSS dash loader, okay? So the way, it's kind of weird, the way these loaders work is you have the uh, last loader first. So the way it goes is when it reads in a CSS file, it will run it through the CSS loader and then it'll run it through the style loader. I know it's a little confusing. Also, by the way, I'm using the old Webpack 1 syntax for the loaders here. Uh, Webpack 2 suggests using a new updated style of syntax, but it still supports the Webpack 1 syntax. I decided for these videos just to go over um, the Webpack 1 syntax in case people from using Webpack 1, um, just to make things less confusing. Okay, um, and just like above, all my CSS will be in my source folder. Um, you can obviously change it to something else if you prefer, but I usually like to keep everything in a source folder and then branch out from there. Okay. Cool. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, I will explain. So we're going to be using hot module replacement, which uh, as I explained in a previous video, uh, is a really great feature of Webpack. Um, it basically allows you to patch modules instead of uh, reloading your whole page. Um, and again, the only way it works is if you have a hot module uh, plugin for it, so to speak, um, for the, the type of code you're patching. Uh, but luckily the style loader, I believe, uh, has the uh, hot module replacement built into it. So essentially what this means is if you make a change in your CSS, rather than reloading the page, it'll just patch the CSS for you, um, which is great because most most often, if you're just making a small style adjustment, you don't really wanna reload the entire page, um, especially if you're working with JavaScript too. Um, so all you need to really do is, uh, we're going to require in Webpack itself, okay? Uh, you can also, of course, just require in the hot module replacement plugin directly, 
um, but you know it's probably just easier to do it this way. So acquiring webpack, and then in our plugins section, we're gonna just do a new dot hot module replacement plugin, okay? And then also don't forget this. This is important in your dev server setup config. Um, you want to do hot true. Um, so now what we get is uh, basically um, similar to how browser sync will patch CSS. Okay. Um, all right. So now this is the change in files. This is pretty important. So now we can do like what I was saying before is we can take that style CSS folder or file that we had in our disk directory, move it into uh, its into the source directory now. So what I did is under source, I have a styles directory and I have style.css. I'm able to delete my dist folder entirely. So dist is only gonna be used for production builds and for serving for memory from the dev server, right? And now here's the cool part. So I have home and about, which are my two entries. And you'll notice up top now, I can import that file. So I'm doing relatives for right now. We'll see how to fix this and make it a little cleaner in the future. Um, but what we can do is, so go up one directory, so I'm back in source, and then go down into styles, and then do style.css. So I'm importing that both in my about page and in my home page. All right, so now it's kind of weird, right? I'm importing a CSS file, not a JavaScript file. So first of all, um, you don't need the uh, to import it as a variable because it's just CSS. Um, so we're just importing the, the file directly. And Webpack will know now to, okay, so I see the CSS file. Let me run it through the CSS loader. Now what the CSS loader does is it can do a bunch of cool things actually now, um, but the main thing that it does is it will try and resolve um, imports um, and uh, URLs. Now this is important to understand because remember Webpack is bundling up your dependencies and configuring them uh, for different production environments possibly, right? So the paths, right? So we have an input and an output, like I explained in my other series, right? So the structure of your input, in other words, your source files, in terms of paths and how they're resolved, could be totally different uh, on how you want your final distribution uh, file uh, organization to be, right? So uh, if you're using import statements or URLs um, to resolve files, Webpack needs to know about that and change them so that they're correct uh, when built for distribution. If that doesn't totally make sense now, I promise it will in the future, um, but just know that the CS loader is important as well as it helps to parse CSS. You can also do things like minifying your CSS here um, and stuff like that, so that's pretty cool. Um, there's also CSS modules, which I might explain later, but it's not not too key for right now. Um, then the style loader is important. Uh, it's only gonna be a tool that we use for development. Uh, we'll talk about production tools after, but um, what the style loader does is basically, if I look here now in my page, first of all, you can see that uh, my sources here for the page is still just this JavaScript bundle. And another note is in the index, I've deleted the link to the style sheet because I don't need it anymore, um, and this is why. So if I look at the elements here, if I open my head tag, I'll make this a little bit bigger. If I open my head tag, you'll see that I actually have a style tag, and if you notice, it's my style CSS. So basically what the style loader does is any CSS, any CSS file that it sees being imported, it will create a style tag in the head and inject it, right? So this is really, really great because uh, when you're developing, um, this makes it really fast. Uh, it's all being loaded in your JavaScript. Um, for production, it's not so ideal, but this is really great for um, development. All right, so that was it for getting started. So now you'll see that if I'm in my style CSS, right, and let's say I wanna change the root font size a little too big to two rems, you'll see that the page did not refresh. However, my CSS was re-injected. So if I go look in here now, um, let's see, go to the style. You'll see it re-injected that module. 
Now, don't be confused. If you have multiple CSS files now, you can start importing them separately right from the JavaScript. Um, don't be confused if you see a bunch of style tags because it doesn't combine them into one style tag. If you're importing a bunch of separate CSS files, it will create a separate style tag for each file, right? It thinks of it as one module, right? Cool, so that's it in the next video. Now that we have this system going, we're gonna refactor our CSS so that it fits a little bit more in line with the way our JavaScript's working.